Um, she was very fearful, holding back tears, scared. Her boyfriend, David, and her got into another argument at the house that he was acting real weird, weird um, talking about the FBI and cartel and just squeezing her real tight around the waist and pushing her around the room. Hey guys, today we have a case where dad is allegedly under a substance use psychotic break. The officer is testifying about what he saw and we're going to go into, unfortunately, this man has kids with the woman that is in the Zoom court today and a separate woman who is not here today. If you like true crime, check out my new channel, Mom's Murder Madness. Officer Johnson is going to be my first witness. Officer Johnson, this is Judge Graham. If you'd unmute, please. Hello, sir. Okay, thank you, sir. If you'd raise your right hand. You swear the testimony you give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you, Ms. Gutierrez. You may proceed. Thank Your you. Honor, I'm not sure who all is in who may be a witness or may be questioned, and the father would invoke the rule. Okay. Do we have anybody in? Um, Ms. Gutierrez, I assume that Ms. Corbett, you're designated. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Um, I also plan to call Mandy Kimball, but she's a party to the case. I think other than Officer Johnson, there are no other potential witnesses currently here in the zoom call with us that i plan to call that are not parties okay i will uh I, I will invoke the rule but i don't think we have anybody in right now that needs to be put back in the waiting room thank you judge uh -huh. okay Ms. gutierrez thank you your honor the department calls did, i'm sorry did i already call dusty johnson as my witness and okay. I swear, yeah. thank you your honor officer johnson who do you work for the emerald police department and what do you do for them I, uh, I'm a patrol officer, so I patrol the streets and answer calls. And how long have you worked for APD? 16 years. And as those 16 years, have you been a certified police officer? Yes, ma'am. And what special education and training did that require? You go into the academy for the uh, nine months and then on street training for another three months and then all the extra training through the uh, police department they require. And were you working as a patrol officer on January 18th of 2024? Yes, ma'am. And did you respond to a call on Tecla Boulevard? Yes, ma'am. What was the nature of that call? It came in as a suspicious call. Okay. And did you first make contact with a Sandy Ray Hall? Yes, ma'am. Now, without telling me what she said, did you next make contact with the Jean Marie Bellas? Yes, ma'am. What was Ms. Bellas's appearance? Um, she was very fearful, holding back tears, scared. Okay. Would you characterize her as emotional? Yes, ma'am. And would you also characterize her as under the emotions of some domestic violence incidents? Yes, ma'am. And what did she describe had occurred? Um, that her boyfriend, David, and her got into another argument at the house that he was acting real weird. weird. Um, talking about the FBI and cartel and just squeezing her real tight around the waist and pushing her around the room. Okay. And did she, uh, did, um, what did Miss Bella say, if anything, about any death threats? She said that he threatened to slit her throat and that he would beat her ass and gladly go back to prison. Okay. And did she indicate that he took her keys and stole her vehicle? Yes, that he jerked the keys out of her hands and said he would take her to work that morning. Okay. Now, going back to the statements that David said, I'm sorry, Did who did she identify her boyfriend as? David Lee, I don't know how to say the last name, Veldhaus. Okay. Sorry. Are you able to spell it for us? If I'm correct, it's V as in Victor, E-L, D as in David, H-U-I-S, if I'm okay. correct. And what... What statements did he make about the cartel? Do you recall? I never actually talked to him. Just, just going by what Gene told me, that uh, he needed to turn in the cartel, that they keep following him, and uh, he wanted to talk to the police and the FBI about him. Let's see here. Pass the witness. Okay. Officer, were any arrests made that night? Um. Corporal Gaddis actually went to David's mom's house and arrested him on some warrants and for the terroristic threats towards Gene. Okay. And was that the same day? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. No other, no other questions, Judge. Mr. Anger? No questions. All right. Anything further of uh, Officer Johnson? Uh, one more question, Your Honor. Okay. Now, Officer Johnson, did Ms. Bellas also indicate that David had physically assaulted her the week before? Yes, ma'am. 
Okay. Uh, no further questions for this witness, Your Honor. If if nobody objects, we do ask that he be released. All right. No Anybody objection. Else? Thank you, Your Honor. The department next calls Elaine Lucero as its witness. Okay. I'm a um, family-based um, safety service specialist. Can you please explain what a family-based safety services worker is? Um, any cases that the department receives that are investigated, if if they believe the family could use um, possible extended services, then the case is uh, is transferred on to us. And is that a program that is a non-legal intervention, but help for the family? Yes, ma'am. And as a worker, did you typically attempt to connect parents in those family-based safety services case with services? Yes, ma'am. And can some of those services include mental health and drug rehabilitation? Yes, ma'am. That's correct. Now, back in 2023, did you have a family-based safety services um, that involved a Doug, David Velhues? Yes, ma'am, I did. And was he residing in the home with a Jean Marie Valles? Yes, that's correct. And was your contact, did that family-based safety services with Jean Marie and David begin before the removal of David's child, Miranda? Yes. And... What attempts did you make to engage David Bell Hughes in services? Um, we made multiple attempts every time we went out to the home to visit with Jean Marie. Um, in the residence, he was there. Um, he just refused to come out of the room. Um, I'd spoke with her on multiple occasions about him also um, getting involved in services as, you know, he was living in the residence and um, there was just never, we never really got a response from him. There's only one time I actually met face to face with him. Now, the services that you were attempting to offer David Belt Hughes, could they, did they also address mental health? Yes. And did they also address substance abuse? Yes, ma'am. And did you actually meet him face to face on November 9th of 2023? Yes, ma'am. How did he appear that day? Um, he, he appeared to be under the influence while, uh, we were in the residence. He was very just erratic. Um, he was yelling, saying he was going to sue the department. He was going to sue the court. Um, and he was going to sue the government. And it was just, we weren't able to even have a conversation with him due to his behaviors. And this November 9th face-to-face -face meeting with Mr. Velthews, that occurred after the removal of his daughter, Miranda. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Now, during that family-based safety services case, was he requested multiple times to drug screen? Yes. And was he, in fact, court-ordered in one of Jean Marie Bales's family cases to drug screen? Yes, ma'am. Did he complete any of those? No, ma'am, he did not. Okay. In addition to um, declining services, did he make any sort of concerning statements? Let, let me withdraw that question and rephrase, Your Honor. Um, was there anything there additionally in that encounter that gave you cause for concern of his mental health? Um, just No, just the yelling and the erratic behavior. Okay. Pass the witness. Ms. Kincaid? No questions, Your Honor. Or one question quickly. Did Was Ms. Kimball asked to work services under family based safety services? Um, I, I don't believe I ever had direct contact with her. That was a completely okay. different case. Okay. Thank you. I'll pass the witness, Your Honor. Ms. Grant? Uh, Ma'am, were you notified of any diagnosed mental illnesses by Mr. Velhuis? No, ma'am. Pass the witness, Judge. Ms. Tringer? No questions. All right. Any follow-ups for Ms. Lucero? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Um, for clarification, Elaine, when the family base with Jean Marie and David started, was Miranda living in the home with David Velhuis? At the beginning of the case, yes, ma'am. And is it your understanding that he was her primary caretaker? Yes, ma'am. Okay. No further questions for this witness, Your Honor. If nobody objects, we ask that she be released. Any, anybody have other questions? No, no objection. All right. No, Thank you for your testimony. I'll release you so you can go about your afternoon's business. 
Thank you. Do you currently work for the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services? At this time, I do no longer work for CPS. Okay. But back during the calendar year of 2023, were you employed with DFPS? Yes, I was. And what was your role there? I was an investigator for Child Protective Services. And did you have involvement with the family of David Velthus? Yes, I did. And specifically, did you receive an initial intake to work for you on July 20th of 2023? Yes, I did. Okay. Now let's go back to the family structure. Um, who was the child in that intake? Miranda Velthui. And who is her mother? Mandy Kimball. And who is her father? David Velthui. And at the time uh, that you started the investigation, was Miranda residing with David Velthus? Yes, she was. Okay. Can you please tell us what the allegations in that July 30th, 2023 intake were? We received our first intake on July 20th, and then we received a second one on July 31st. Do you want the information for both of them? I want only the information for July 20th, 2023. Okay. And then I'll ask about the next one. Okay. I just wanted to make sure because we put them all together. Um, on the 20th, we received a report regarding the neglectful supervision of Miranda by her father and his then girlfriend, Jean Marie Belize. It was reported that uh, Jean Marie was working extended hours and wouldn't get home till after 830 at night. During that time, Miranda would be at home alone with her father and he was not providing her basic needs to her while in that home. And then subsequent to that, or rather, can you expand on which basic needs Miranda was not being provided with? It was in the report that he was not providing her with food. He would not provide her with uh, any kind of stability in the home. He was sleeping all day. She was not able to wake him up at times. During that report we received, it also stated that she had been scared. She couldn't wake her father up and she spent three hours on the phone with her mother that day. With the allegation of drug use in the home, it was reported that Mr. Veltwi and Miss Belize were using the home and they would become violent and crazy when they were coming down off of those drugs. There was also in that report that they were using drugs in the home and locking themselves in the bedroom to do so. That report also stated that Ms. Belize had pending charges from an incident where she ran over Mr. Veltwi with her car. Now, while you worked the investigation, was there a, um, a temporary order in Ms. Bellis's family law case that ordered both her and David Veltwi's to drug screen? Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry to interrupt, but Miss Kimball is speaking to someone, and I was just wondering who it is since the rule was been invoked has been invoked. Miss Kimball, who who are you who are you talking to there? You're muted. My aunt Janet. Okay, she's not going to be a witness, is she? No, sir. Okay, all right, go ahead. Thank you, Your Honor. Um. I'm sorry, Danielle, can you re-answer my last question? Yes, he was court, they were court-ordered to drug screen. Okay. Your Honor, we offer petitioner's exhibit, let me see which one, number two, amended. That's which the temporary amended? orders in Ms. Bellis's case? Yes, Your Honor, it's the amended temporary orders um, ordering David Bell Hughes to drug screen. Okay. Any objections? No objection. No, Your Honor. Honor. All right, uh, Petitioner's Exhibit 2 is admitted. Thank you, Your Honor. And Danielle, is it correct that he did not follow that order? Correct. Okay. Now, in your investigation, did you make contact with Ms. Bellas and Mr. Veltheus on August 3rd of 2023? Yes, I did. And how did Mr. Veltheus respond to the intake allegations? He became very agitated while I was in the home and speaking with him. He kept coming in and leaving the home. Um, he kept denying there were any problems in the home. He would get angrier and angrier the longer I stayed in the home. 
He accused me of spying on him multiple times. He stated that I had no right to investigate him. He was very combative with me the whole time I was in the home. And part of in part of that conversation, did you address the allegation that Jean Marie Velez had hit him with a car? Yes. And let's hear. And later in August, did Miss Jean Marie actually um, plead guilty and be put on deferred adjudication for that criminal case? Yes, she did. Your Honor, we offer petitioners exhibit number three, the indictment against Jean Marie Bellesse for aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, um, indicating that David Bell Hughes was the victim. Objection? No objection. No, Your Honor. All right, petitioners three submitted. Thank you, Your Honor. We next offer petitioners exhibit number four, the order of deferred adjudication from August 17th of 2023 in that same criminal case against Jean Marie Bellesse. All right, objections? No objection. And I also note for the court that the offense was, the judgment was for the lesser included offense of assault causes bodily injury, family violence. All right, no objections then petitioner scores admitted. Thank you, Your Honor. Now, Danielle, the way you uh, you described David Veldhue's appearance at that meeting, what conclusion did you draw? Um, while speaking with him, it seemed like he was either not sleeping well and suffering from being tired, or it appeared like he might have been on some kind of substance while I was in the home. I could not tell for sure. And did that cause you alarm for the safety of Miranda? Yes, ma'am, it did. Now, did you also have an opportunity? Let's see here, just a moment. Did you ask Mr. Veldhuis to drug screen in that conversation? Yes, ma'am, I did. And did he do that? No, he did not. And did you next speak with Mandy Kimball on August 14th of 2023? Yes, I did. And what concerns did she indicate about her daughter being with David? She was scared that while in his care, she was not getting the proper care that she needed. They've had to take food over to her. She reported to me that she did take food to Miranda. Um, she also stated that Mr. Velhu was not following their custody agreement, and she had not seen Miranda during her normal visitation time. Now, did Ms. Ms. Kimball also indicate that there was a temporary order for David Veldhuis to drug screen when he was requested. Yes. And would you, and if Miranda, I apologize, let me rephrase. If Mandy Kimball indicated she had requested David to complete a drug screen and he didn't, would that mean he was in violation of that order as well? Yes, Objection calls for a legal opinion. Okay. I'll go back. Now, Danielle, to your knowledge, there is a temporary order on a family law case with Miranda Veltius. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And that temporary order gives Mandy Kimball and David Veltius permission to request drug screens. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And did Mandy indicate she had made that request to David? Yes, she did. Did she also indicate that he did not complete the drug screens? Yes, she did. Now, Danielle, did she specific, did Ms. Kimball specifically indicate that she was concerned that Miranda was hungry on multiple occasions? Yes. And what did she state about Miranda not being able to wake her father up? She stated at one point Miranda had called her because she was having a hard time getting her father to wake up. Miranda was scared. She, she didn't know why he was sleeping so much. She stated to me that Miranda would call her crying at times when she could not get Mr. Veldwee to wake up. Now, regarding Marin Mandy Kimball's own history, what did she state about her own history? She stated that she knew that she had history with both criminal and with CPS. She was very honest with me about everything and that she had gone to prison. And when she was released, she started working the services needed to ensure that she could see Miranda. And did she comply with the department's request to drug screen during the investigation? Yes, she did. 
And was that drug screen clean or negative for all illicit substances? Yes, ma'am, it was. Now, on September 1st of 2023, did you um, accompany Family-Based Safety Services for a home visit to Ms. Bales and David Veltius? Yes, I did. Okay. And was Mr. Veltius present that day? He was present when we first arrived. He left. Okay. Did he say anything before leaving? He stated to us that the case was just on Jean Marie and he did not have anything to do with it. And that even though he'd been drug screened or ordered to drug screen, he didn't have to comply. And then he left. And then on September 7th, 2023, did you receive a call from Mandy Kimball? Yes, I did. Could you please tell us in detail what she stated? When I received that call, it was reported to me that over the weekend... Mr. Veltwee and Miranda had been kicked out of Jean Marie Belize's home. They found them walking in the middle of the night. They took them back to the house that Miss Kimball was living in with her father. Um, by the end of the weekend, he had gone back to living with Jean Marie and took Miranda with him. Um, it was reported that at that point, he'd still not drug drug screened for Miss Kimball. Okay. And then on September 21st, 2023, what occurred regarding David Veldhues? Um, I received an email from Ms. Kimball, and I also received a phone call from the grandfather of Miranda stating that Mr. Veldhue had not allowed Miranda to attend her own birthday party. And in addition to that, did he not show up to pick up Miranda from school? That is correct. He actually forgot to pick her up from school and they had to call somebody to come get her. And did that also happen on September 22nd of 2023? Yes, it did. And did that happen again on October 2nd of 2023? Yes, it did. And based on everything you've testified about, did the department pursue an order to participate again? to help force Mr. Veltius to work services. Yes, ma'am, we did. And were we attempting to mitigate the risk and harm to Miranda? Yes, ma'am. However, that petition for an order to participate was denied. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Do you recall why? At that point, while in court, the department was court ordered to do a removal affidavit and to bring Miranda into care. And was that due to the severity of issues presented by Mr. Veltius? Yes, ma'am. Now, regarding the department's reasonable efforts to avoid removal, is it correct that the department offered both mental health and substance abuse services through the family-based safety services case with him and Ms. Bellis? Yes, ma'am. And during your own work on this investigation, did you also um, try to have a drug screen to rule out that drug use was a threat to the child? Yes, ma'am. Did you make multiple attempts to engage him? Yes, ma'am, I did. And was Mr. Veld Hughes not cooperative? He would not talk to the department at all. Now, when you have a parent that is the caretaker of the child, um, and for clarification, Miranda was living with Mr. Veld Hughes until the legal removal of the child. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Now, when you have a parent taking care of the child that is not cooperative, does it rule out any possibility for a case to be worked through family-based safety services? Yes, ma'am. Does it also rule out the possibility of a parent-child safety placement to remove the child from the harm without legal intervention? Yes, ma'am. I also ask that the court take judicial notice that um, it created a no contact order for David with the child Miranda. So noted. I next ask the court to take judicial notice of the status hearing order. So noted. And I ask the court to note that it also ordered drug screen and screening for David Feld Hughes. So noted. And it also contains a um, an order for David Veldhues not to visit Miranda's school. So noted. 
I next ask the court to take notice of the initial permanency hearing before final order. Okay, so noted. And I ask the court to note that it also orders no contact for David with both Mandy and the kid. I'm sorry, both the mother Mandy and the child Miranda. So noted. Thank you, Your Honor. Stephanie, if you'll please continue with your brief description of the services ordered and indicating whether or not they were completed. Yes, ma'am. Sorry. <laughs> he was asked to complete two 12-step meetings a week with either AA or NA or celebrate recovery. He did not complete that. Um, he was asked to participate in and complete a psychosocial evaluation with Jennings Counseling. He did not complete that. He was asked to attend individual counseling with Jennings Counseling. He did not attend. He was asked to actively participate in and complete anger management with Troy Timmons. He did not complete. Um, was Ms. Kimball also asked to work services? Yes, ma'am. Okay, she was asked to maintain contact with you. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And has she maintained contact with you? Yes, ma'am. She was asked to maintain stable and appropriate employment. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Has she complied with that service? Yes, she has. She was asked to be responsible for Miranda's educational and developmental behavioral needs. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Has she done that? Yes, ma'am. Has she notified you if she has changed her uh, residence or phone number? Yes, she has. Has she maintained stable housing throughout this case? Yes, she has. Has she uh, completed an OSAR for the department? No. There was no was need. She, she never tested positive. Okay. Has she always drug screened for the department when she was asked? Yes, she has. Okay. Has she allowed uh, the child to have relationships with other family members and friends? Yes, ma'am. And has she allowed the department and CASA uh, and any other court-ordered relationships to, to main contact, maintain contact with the child? Yes. Yes, she has. Okay. And she was asked to attend therapy. Did she complete that service? Yes, she has. Okay, and has she maintained her medical, dental, and any other needs that the child has had? Yes, she has. 